Hi guys. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, today I want to talk about um, my sermon title will be the most delicate balance. Let's pray. Father, <clears throat> I praise you and I worship you for what you're about to do. Lord Jesus, use me to to spread your word, Lord God. Help us to balance our thoughts and feelings the way you would have us balance them. I pray, Lord God, that you will just take over this sermon. Uh, and I do my best to expound your word the way you would have me expound it, Lord Jesus. Speak to me, speak through me. Free lives and hearts and minds, Lord God. When it, when it comes to balancing our thoughts and our feelings, Lord God, I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, I pray that you're doing well this week. Um, as I said, this sermon is going to be called The Most Delicate Balance. Lately, uh, the Lord has been really dealing with me on, not dealing with me, but speaking to me um, about thoughts and feelings. And there are two schools of thought on this. Um, the first school of thought is just live in the moment, do what you feel, listen to your heart very touchy-feely and live living by your feelings and that has gotten us in trouble because if you constantly live by what you feel or who you feel you are who you feel you're supposed to be you're not going to have a center because the thing with feelings is that they change very rapidly. Uh, one time you may feel like doing this and one time you don't. Or one time you may feel like going to church and one Sunday you don't. So feelings go up and down so there's no center. And another school of there's no center of gravity because your feelings um, like I said before, that they, they change, and with changing feelings come changing morals, and that's what's gotten our world into deep trouble. Um, um, because way back when, when Jesus, um, when Jesus founded all our, our when Jesus gave, when God, sorry, when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses at, on the mountain, on, you know, when Moses went up to, to the mountain to get those Ten Commandments, um, the feelings of the children of Israel were that they should follow them and when you look further um, in Exodus uh, going down to Levitic uh, going down to Leviticus and numbers you see all of God's commandments with in regards to the law. And the feelings of God, uh, that, not feelings, and sorry, not of God, but the feelings of the people at that time where we must follow God because he created us, he made us a nation, he freed us from slavery, and it was the feelings of of the people that we should 
follow God without question, without thought, without without any without any question whatsoever. But coming down after um, through God, through Jesus, through all the kings and queens, as as feelings have changed um, from different things, we have neglected all of that God has, has put in place. Which, like, I'll give you an example because I'm not making any sense. Um, let's say marriage or who a person is. Um, so, in the garden, God set marriage to be one man, one woman. And the, and the emotions and the people of that time said, yes, this is what God put in place, we all just go with it. But through times, uh, through time, as feelings have changed, um, morals have changed, society has changed, um, now it's like, um, I don't know what the technical definition of marriage is now, but I... I think it's something like when two uh, people, it's a union between two people um, because the feelings of society has changed. So, so the problem with living by your feelings is feelings change. And that's why society is so um, messed up, I believe, Co not messed up, but so confused because there is no now moral right and wrong. There is no everything is relative, which means how you feel, just do it. If you feel like being a man today, let's just be a man. If you feel like being a woman today, let's just be a woman. If you feel inside that that's who you're supposed to be and that you were born the wrong person, just change. It all goes by your feelings. And that becomes very dangerous because there is no center, there is no um, moral compass that everybody is just doing what's right in their own eyes. And the book of Judges, this reminds me of the book of Judges when it was at a time when the, when the children of Israel didn't want a king and they had split in half, I believe. This is where the book of Judges took place. And if you read the book of Judges about Samson and Deborah and all those judges, you'll see that at every turn they said, um, after the fall of every judge, they said, now the people did what, what, what was right in their own eyes, which means, which means uh, they lived by their feelings. So when you live by your feelings, there's no moral right and wrong. It's just do what you feel, listen to your heart, and all of that. And that could be dangerous because if there's if there's what's right for you is not right for me, everybody could do what's right in their own eyes. So. If it's right for you to, you know, uh, not go to school and you're 16, you don't have to go to school anymore. You can just drop out. If it's, 
not right for you to, you know, uh, um, stay in your marriage. You can just get a divorce. It's all about how you feel. So people don't put in the work anymore for stuff. They don't work for stuff. So, um, they don't work for stuff. They just give up because it's not how they feel. And feelings change from day to day. And, and on the other side, because I did say the delicate mountain, so that is feeling, feelings. Um, so, on the other side, if a person lives too much in their thoughts, like in their heads, too much with uh, reason and logic, there can be a negative connotation to that too. Because if you live too much in your thought life and are thinking everything over, you might just think yourself out of God's will because a lot of things that God has to say in this hour, a lot of things that the Lord is doing in this hour will not make logical sense. So if you live by your thoughts, you may miss something wonderful. So so and you may miss some really valuable opportunities and um and you may miss out on knowing some really wonderful people friendships romantic relationships because in your thought they don't fit you, so you won't even um, pay attention to them or give them the time of day. Um, so, and it's important to, to think things through, but you can also think yourself out of your blessing. And that's what is happening to somebody out there today. You're so logical, you're so um, into your thought life that you that you are over analyzing everything. When God presents something to you, you're like, well, is this the right thing? Is this whatever? Um, what are totally valid questions to ask. You should ask those questions but you should also be aware that in this season, sometimes God, God's thoughts are not your thoughts. Thought. And if you're trying to reason with your, with your mind, you may miss something that God is trying to do in your life. You may miss a blessing that God is trying to send. You may miss a person that God is trying to send in your life because you're like, oh no, oh no, that person doesn't fit my list. Sometimes people have a list of the person that they're going to marry and if that person doesn't fit their li list, they pass them over. And I don't know who this is for. It could be for someone years down the road. It could be for someone now. He's saying in a romantic relationship, put away your list. Put away your preconceived uh, notions of what, um, of the person he's bringing into your life. And follow what he's telling you to do. It may not make sense, often it doesn't, but you're about to think yourself out of your opportunity. You're about to think yourself 
out of where God wants you to be. So, um, so trust him. He knows where he, he's taking you and stop overthinking things. And yes, I think per people should count the cost of every decision you make. But I also think on the other hand that sometimes God will ask you to do things that are beyond your thought and beyond your comprehension and you will and you will be be thinking your way out of what God has for you. So we can't live in in your um, feelings because it's not um, feelings are not stable. They change from uh, from generation to generation, from society to society, and we can't live our thoughts because if we're too logical, we may miss what God has in store for us. And at that point again, when I think of uh, Jesus and his ministry and what he was teaching and what he was doing, Jesus did all kinds of crazy things. Um, if you think, if you look on the day that Jesus was living, the society in which Jesus was living, um, um, he lived in a society that was really regimented with, with the Jews had these certain rules of how the society would be and um, how we had to behave and act. Um, and Jesus just kind of flipped that on its head. He hung out with people that you weren't supposed to hang out with. He touched people that we weren't supposed to touch. He did crazy things that would make no sense to, to the mind. He, he, he really was, I would say, a literal hell raiser. And I'm not swearing there. I, I really think he came to raise hell and turn the religious system on its head with um, how he worked and how he did things. And he was so radical with what he did that they killed him for it. But even that was part of God's plan. It was the major part of God's plan. So sometimes what you think is going to kill you is all a part of what God has, has planned for you. It's all a part of his divine working in your life. So um, I called this sermon the delicate balance. When I say the delicate balance, I mean the balance between thoughts and feelings. And I think in some cases, you have to think through things. You have to reason through things. You have to really count the cost of decisions. And in some cases, you have to go on your feelings, what it's not your feelings, but his feelings. And how do you find out his feelings? What does your decision do to your spirit? See, the, the body is a place where we live, it's our physical house. Um, the soul is our mind, will, and emotions. 
but our spirit is the part that communicates with God. So sometimes you have to go, people call it intuition. I call it um, a spirit system where you kind of get this um, knowing in your spirit that something is not right. Everything looks right on paper, but something in your spirit is saying, no, that's not right. And it's actually, today's sermon is about finding the delicate balance between when to use your thoughts and when to use your feelings. Now, for me, it, it all has to do with uh, your relationship with God and how you work that out. A few sermons ago, I thought, I forgot the title of it now. I went into hearing the voice of God and what that looks like. And I feel that hearing the voice of God um, when I say the voice of God, I, I mean the nudging of God. I mean the prodding of God. I mean the working of God in your life. When I say the voice of God, that's what I mean. Um, I believe God prods, he nudges, and then he speaks. And how a person can really know the voice of God in their lives is to spend time with him and to get to know how he speaks to you. <coughs> because there is a lot, a lot of sermons, a whole bunch about hearing the voice of God. But I, this is only my personal thing, I believe that the voice of God is different for every single person um, because we are God's children. We are his children. So anybody, I have two nephews, I don't have children yet, but anybody with more than one child knows that all their children are different. I know my sister and I are different. Um, my my sisters and I are different. My brother and I is different. So you, so when you're um, when you're a parent of multiple children, you have to talk to your children differently. You have to. You could be dealing with the same situation, but what one child will respond to, the other one will be like, yeah, whatever. They won't respond to at all. So, so you've got to get to know how each of your children responds. So, so in the natural, so in the spiritual. So God respond. God talks to people in several different ways. The ways are too numerous to even think about um, and, and some preachers will give you a list yeah he talks through his word he talks through people he talks through circumstances yes and that's all true but the, there are several there are um, multiple ways that God speaks and I'm not going to try and limit God to say he will speak this way and he will speak that way. What you need to do is to, um, to hear the voice of God in your own life is to spend time with him. Develop what I call your rhythm. Like the Holy Spirit within every person uh, in his body, in his kingdom will develop a, a a rhythm, a way of talking to a person that that particular person will know that yes, the Lord is speaking to me. Sometimes 
he will talk audibly. Sometimes he will talk uh, through commercials. Sometimes or or media driven things, songs and you know stuff. Sometimes he will talk to you through people. Sometimes he will talk to you uh, through preachers. Sometimes he will talk to you through art and painting and other stuff like that. And there are so many ways that God talks. And the only way to develop your spiritual ears is to um, hone in on your relationship. Spend time with God. And he will begin showing himself to you in his own unique way. And what I would say is how to start that is start by reading the Word of God. And where you start reading the Word of God also depends on the kind of person you are. Um, a lot of people will say start with John, start with the Gospels, but I say it depends on who you are, what you're into, uh, what you gravitate to. First of all, because I'm, I'm a major chick flick fan, so what attracted me was I love the book of the Song of Solomon. I love the book of the Song of Solomon because I love love stories. So that attracted me. And after that, he began to speak through other books, to um, through other love stories because he knows that I'm that kind of a person. And then he started to reveal his love story for his bride because he knew that I am that kind of person, that I love chick flicks and love stories, and uh, I'm a very, you know, movie-driven person. So he started with that, and then he he kind of related the Bible to, to what I was into, and as I read the Bible, it began to come alive as a love story because he knew that was me. Now, if you are into um, uh, fighting, if you're, if you're, if you love Gladiator, you may want to start with the um, historical books like Kings, like Chronicles, like First and Second Samuel, like all of that, because those have a lot, and Joshua, Joshua's good too, if you're into blood and gore and, you know, fighting with swords, because those have a lot of fighting scenes in them. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not saying that fighting is a good thing, but I'm saying that if you're into war movies, that might be good, good, um, a good place to start in the Word of God. And he will start to reveal himself to you using those scriptures, using your uh, proclivities and propensities. And, and if you're a TV buff, he may speak to you through commercials. Now, and if you're a music buff, he may speak to you through the kind of music you have, you like. And it, um, if you, if you're not familiar with gospel music yet, he will, he may use secular music like he often does with me, because I, I grew up listening to gospel music, but I'm most connected with secular music, because that's where I was at the time. Now, now I can connect with both. <laughs> so he often uses music to speak to me as well, cause he knows I like music, and I I will most 
most of my sermons come from a song that I've heard or a song that I love. And I love when he shows up and I'm not expecting it. Quite often, I'm listening to Spotify and I will hear like usually a secular song and he will begin to speak something to me that is totally out of the blue. Um, like, for example, when I, um, when the video uh, for We Are God's Mirrors, that was almost a few years ago now, I was minding my own business and uh, the song Mirrors by Justin Timberlake came on. So, so he used that song to say, we are his mirrors. And he began to speak to me through that song. In turn, he spoke to you through that video. So I don't like to say God speaks here, God speaks like this. God can speak any way he wants to and he will get your attention um, any way he can using anything he can but you really just need to spend time with him where whatever that is whatever that looks like for you and start with the base of his word um, because in his word, if you start with that, um, he, he will speak to you through that. And he'll never say anything outside of his word. So if you, if you want to check that it's God, check his word. And when you, you discover that, yes, it is God, dig a little deeper, ask more questions questions and he will answer them in his way. All we have to do is listen for his answers. Um, so guys, thank you this week for this time together. I really enjoy these sermons. I hope that um, you guys are doing super well and I hope you guys are enjoying them along with me. I hope these sermons are helpful. Um, to tell you the truth, sometimes I do a lot of preparing for them and sometimes I just turn on the camera and see what God co comes up with. Um, and sometimes I study for days or, and sometimes I do a I'm afraid of looking up and whatever. So sermons come to me in different ways and it is so, I'm so grateful for everybody who has come up to me in the halls and whatever and says that this has really blessed them. I'm so grateful that what God is putting in me is blessing other people. I thank you and I love you and I will be praying for you. And and the, and watch out for the delicate balance. Use your thoughts when you have to think through things. And think th through things and reason through things. And use your spirit man when you have to. I won't call them feelings. I'll call it spirit man when you have to. Because he'll guide you. And, and even, and as well, you can use them in tandem. Sometimes it's not, is this a thought thing or a feeling thing? Sometimes it's both. Uh, sometimes uh, the Lord wants us to use both our thoughts and our feelings to discern his will. Uh, sometimes it's not either or sometimes it's both and and you you need to get close to him so you can understand 
how he speaks to you and how you can discern what are thoughts and what are feelings because no pastor, no preacher can tell you uh, how God speaks to you. You need to learn and grow that relationship yourself. And when you do, life will, will get easier. Pain won't go away. Pain is a growth tool oftentimes, but it will get more easier and it will be easier to discern when you spend time with God and getting to know how he speaks to you. And I think writing things down, uh, writing what he speaks to you down and how he speaks to you is key. Because when you codify things, um, it, it, can, it stays in your memory longer it can go down in you deeper and it can really bear a lot of fruit rather than just saying, okay, that's cool and just leaving it there. He really wants people to develop discernment in their feet in this season over the what's thought like what's thought lifetime and what's spirit man time. When I say time, I mean when to think with your thoughts and when to listen with your spirit and to know what to do. They, they are both valuable tools. I don't, I honestly don't believe that God gave us feelings just to not use them and only use our thoughts and uh, and 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 feelings uh, sorry and thoughts only to use our feelings I think he gave them both and he gave us both and both have their um, both have their place and we just have to um, discern in the way he speaks to us, in the way he communicates with us, which one he wants us to use at which times. And he doesn't want us to live in either one all the time because feelings have their drawbacks and thoughts have their drawbacks. Feeling, feelings have their blessings and so do thinking things through. So guys, have a good day. See you next week. Bye.